Hello fellow watcher, my name is Cintelira and I'll be comparing and contrasting two different paths women could take in the past by using these two texts. One is called Carta Antenagorica by Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz and the other one is called Sacuntala by Calidasa. In Carta Antenagorica, Sor Juana lived in the 17th century in New Spain, later known as Mexico. She was born a Criolla and an illegitimate child. Regardless of this, she still grew up as a very privileged young woman. In her youth, she had to make a decision between being in the bachelor court or becoming a nun. She became a nun with the only condition that she would have her own room where she can study. She became a nun for two reasons. One was previously explained. Her affair with studying secular topics and gaining knowledge women were not supposed to care or know about. The second reason was her intense rejection towards marrying a man. In her letter, she confessed, I became a nun, for although I knew that the religion state imposed obligations, I speak of incidentals and not of fundamentals, most repugnant to my temperament. Nevertheless, in view of my total disinclination to marriage, it was the most becoming and proper condition that I could choose to ensure my salvation. To her, marrying a man is dooming her soul to a life not worth living, and the only salvation was to avoid that path completely. It could arise as a question to someone, why didn't she just stay single? Why did she become a nun? Well, the answer lies in the fact that women before the 21st century were looked down upon if they did not have a husband spent to bear children with. Women did not even have a legal identity without a man. This is called coverture and it prominently existed within Hispanic culture, which is where machismo originated from and still prevails. Women did not have autonomy over what happened to their bodies, and the closest thing to making a decision for themselves is to give their life to God and succumb to the orders of the ministry, which is also controlled by men. The sect of control that all women were subjected to pushed her Juana to have an even bigger desire to want to live and control her own life as she could see the absurdities women go through because of patriarchal beliefs. She said this in her letter by saying, At one time, my enemies persuaded a very saintly and godless prelate who believed that study was a matter for the Inquisition to forbid me to study. I obeyed her for two months or so that she had the power over me. It won't concern my reading, but as for the absolute ban of study, this was not in my power to obey. For although I did not study in books, I studied everything that got created, and all these universal machines served me as a textbook. I saw nothing without reflecting upon it. Everything I heard moved me to thought. This habit is so strong in me that I see nothing without reflecting upon it. The way she thought was expressed as actions of rebellion against a society that kept her trapped. She ultimately took control of her life by doing the most rebellious thing a woman could do, to live a life of celibacy, which means that she will not be marrying and she will not be having kids. This is the antithesis of what a woman was believed to be, the image of ultimate caretakers. She decided to live life for herself and God only, because the only way to not be with a man is to give your life to a mystical man and his subordinates. In order to keep pursuing the path of knowledge, as she saw no reason as to why women could not pursue secular studies the same way men did, because there isn't, and to avoid marriage. At the end of her letter, she starts naming women who have written profound texts that have impacted her as to make a point that there's not a lack of intelligent women, but ignorant men who are not looking for them. So Juana's decision to pursue a life of celibacy through becoming a nun can be seen as a free choice that women have as an alternative to marrying, but that is far from the truth. As the only other options for a woman who did not want a man consist of sustaining an unhappy marriage with a child from a man that they never desired, or being publicly humiliated and being deemed worthless by not having a husband. The worst part is that sometimes the choice is taken away from the woman, as it happened to Shakuntala and Kalidasa. Shakuntala is a Sanskrit play written in the 5th century that has been named the greatest Indian literary work of any period. It is about an ascetic woman named Shakuntala and a king named Dushanta who fall in love with the curse of Durvasas, a man who is the sage, falls upon them after Shakuntala made the mistake of not welcoming him properly, making the king forget that she is his wife and they're expecting a child together. Shakuntala's character is one that differs a lot from Sor Juana, since she's a protagonist of a play about romance written by a man. She displays five characteristics when in the presence of Dushanta, meaning that she's a reserved woman when it comes to displaying romantic feelings of affection, as to show her chastity. This is shown in the way she carries herself in the first act, where they meet for the first time. Almost every single one of her dialogues starts with to herself and she speaks with her friends and not the king directly, meaning direct confrontation is avoided. Another example is in Act 2, when she finally starts speaking to the king only after her friends left her own purpose. Her timid character represents what an ideal woman should be like in front of a man, docile and adhering to the man's thoughts and ideals instead of her own. Shakuntala follows these ideals by making the heart-wrenching decision of leaving her father and her friends to travel into the unknown into the king's city in order for him to recognize her as his wife and their new unborn child. This decision weighed heavily on her as she left the only world she knew. Her journey to leave the hermitage to visit the king can be seen as a metaphor for her leaving her youth behind, or her father, to become a betrayed woman and marry the king, another man. 
As she arrived, she was not receivable by the king as he forgot all his memories about her because of the curse. Shahuntala had to endure public humiliation and the pain of not being able to return to her home. The ascetics that accompanied her told her that she could not return home and that she should bear the shame of her rejection. The way her society treated her is a representation that misogyny women had to go through, abandoning all women who taint their chaste image, calling them promiscuous names, even if they did nothing of sorts. And as previously mentioned, Shakuntala's only fault was that of leaving her hermitage to pursue a man. Sure, she didn't read the sage properly, but the punishment he gave her of erasing her memory from the man she's about to have a baby with is one of the most cruel retributions for a woman in that time and culture, especially since she didn't do anything wrong or for her minimal actions that did not intend to hurt anybody. Her character developed into a young woman when she went from someone timid to someone who can be argumentative for herself. This development might have come from the fact that she's not only defending herself, but her child as well. Her bravery can be shown with the following quote. All right, I may be a self-willed wanton woman, but it was faith in the poor dynasty that brought me into the power of a man with honey in his words and poison in his heart. This quote shows a remarkable difference between her past actions of not even being able to make a contact to the hurtful words she said to him out of emotion and disbelief. Becoming a mother has given her car to development, but a question should arise, who is the author? The author of this play is a man named Kalitisa that lived during the 5th century in the Gupta Empire. Having lived in a patriarchal society and by being a part of his time, he might have attributed Shakuntala's character development through fulfilling the general roles of a woman, such as leaving her father for marriage and having a child. Her coming of age is to be driven by roles that only a woman can fulfill, which captures exactly how men view women. To compare and contrast both texts and how their choices affected them individually, Sir Juana was the opposite of what Shakuntala represents. Shakuntala was the ideal woman described by a man, and she followed all the ideals of being a devoted wife, while Sir Juana desired a celibate lifestyle. This difference brought upon them completely different ways of living their lives, even though they were both women in patriarchal societies. Sir Juana lived a life dedicated to her studies without worrying about fulfilling any gender roles. On the contrary, she was an advocate against them through her letters. Shakuntala, however, being a character in a story, represents femininity and womanhood, accepting her role as a mother and a wife. However, her life took a tragic turn and she was forced to live a life full of shame and guilt due to the ideas that her society carried. Even though the outcome of their lives turned out completely different, there's an argument here to make that it was not out of their own volition. The patriarchal societies they endured, even if they came from different time periods and cultures, shaped the options women had available as to how they could live their lives. If Sir Juana were to be alive in this very day and age, it can be assumed from the quotes in her letter that she would choose to go to university without the need to pursue theology. And as for Shakuntala, well, she was a fictional woman written by a man, so her behavior wouldn't have changed as much, but at least she would not have been an outcast for having a child out of wedlock. Every aspect of their life was not of their own decision, even though they thought so. It was a decision of men in the patriarchal society, which means they lacked true free will. They both endured hardships, Sir Juana having her belittlement of being a woman who is more knowledgeable than most men, and Shakuntala by having repressed shame because of the views of society around her. The big question, why is this important? This is important because these works represent opposite views on women, Shakuntala representing an ideal woman in the perspective of a man, and Sir Juana representing the potential women have. Women are much more than mothers and cooks. These stories represent how far society has come in understanding that women deserve equality. Women can make decisions for themselves, but due to a patriarchal society, these decisions were limited to something only men wanted. So Juana becoming a nun should not have been her only option if she did not decide to be with a man, and Shakuntala should not have been shamed for her actions. These texts represent how society has progressed, and I'm going to end it with a quote from Sor Juana's poem that Shakuntala would have enjoyed. Pues, para que os espantáis de la culpa que tenéis, queredlas cualas hacéis, o hacerlas cualas buscáis. Thank you for watching.